Greetings, growers from around the world. Jordan River here, back with more Growcast, casting a green light of knowledge onto your garden. Real quick, we got a travel update. We're in Oklahoma, everybody. We are coming to Oklahoma. I'm coming to Oklahoma. I'll see you there. We've got a listener and member meetup scheduled for Friday, the 21st of January. We're in Oklahoma City, everyone. Friday, the 21st of January. Uh, Now, a venue might already be released. At the time of this recording, you got to stay tuned for more details. Get on our green list, growcastpodcast.com forward slash list. That'll keep you up to date, up to down to the minute, down to when we're down there and let you know where we're at. And also follow us on Instagram at growcast. Again, we are going to have a meetup January 21st in Oklahoma. And how about this? The next month, February, we are out in Southern California. I think I'm going to do a meetup in Oceanside, California, between LA and San Diego. That's Friday the 18th of February, everyone. Friday the 18th of February, SoCal. And then, like I said, Oklahoma, January 21st. Today, we've got such a great episode. We are entering January grow gear January. That is, that's right. It's the first episode of the month. I've been doing these themes. This month's theme is grow gear January. We're talking lights. We're talking nutrients. We're talking companies that own these grow gear products and who owns these companies and mega corporations. We're doing it all. We're doing it all month long. And we're starting with Martim all the way from Europe. Martim is coming on to talk about photon tech lighting. That's right. You know them. You love them. They're here to talk. This episode is badass. From LED science to artificial intelligence, we go all over the place. And it's a perfect transition from Worldwide December into Grow Gear January. Enjoy the show, everybody. I know you've been loving the content, and uh, it's my pleasure to bring it to you. Before we jump in, though... Shout out to AC Infinity, baby. They make those sweet tents over at acinfinity.com, along with their fans, of course, and lights, and their new cloud ray is coming out. So much more. Code GROWCAST15 saves you 15% site-wide, and always send us a screenshot of you using any of our codes to be entered to win free seeds. Get it to us however you can. Email, Instagram, Discord, however. AC Infinity, though, baby, acinfinity.com. Again, code GROWCAST15 saves you 15% on what I have to say are the best tents. I'm looking at mine right now. They are absolutely badass. The double thick poles are a massive difference in the sturdiness of the thick canvas, of course. It's got everything you need. It's a really sweet tent. It's even got a little uh, a little panel for your controller, your climate controller right out front. It's got both mine attached to it. It looks so sleek. It looks so sick. They're the best tents around and also the best fans in the game. They've got the light series, which is a little bit cheaper if you want to save that money. So again, acinfinity.com code GROWCAST15. Send us snapshots anytime you use a GROWCAST code. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being subscribed. Enjoy Grow Gear January. Love you all. Hope you're doing incredible things in your grow. Thank you for listening and enjoy the program. Hello, podcast listeners. You are now listening to Growcast. I am your host, Jordan River, and I want to stop and say thank you for tuning in again today. Before we get started, of course, I urge you to subscribe to the show, tell a friend about the show, and of course, join the order, the order of cultivation. Find it at growcastpodcast.com slash join the order. Our little growing secret society. Oh, today we have a very interesting episode. You know, we're kind of bridging the gap here from Worldwide December. Uh, moving into Grow Gear January. Um, So this is a perfect transition episode. All the way from Portugal, we have Martim from Photon Tech and Lumatech on the line. What's going on, Martim? Hello, Jordan. Thank you so much for for the invitation. Uh, It's a pleasure to be here. I I hope we could have done it earlier, but uh, anyway, today is the perfect day. And I'm sure we're going to have uh, opportunities to do even more. Absolutely. And I hope to clarify, just talk about generally brand, technology, markets, link between Lumatech and Photon Tech. What do I do? What do we do? Why do we believe on our products? And um, we it. can stay here for ages talking about this, <laughs> but uh, that's why I say today we do one and who knows we do another one soon. Oh, I love it, man. Well, like I said, we're just coming off of Worldwide December where we visited growers from all over the world and just talk about their climate and their regions and stuff. So it's pretty cool that you're coming to us from Portugal and then moving into grow gear January. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. Uh, Lights, uh, ventilation, nutrients, all sorts of stuff. So you really check all the boxes. It's perfect timing. 
And uh, I'm just ready to dive in, man. Now, of course, you guys know our partner, Photon Tech. They make high-end bar-style fixtures. Um, this is not an advertisement episode. We are talking to our team to understand more about the company, understand more about the industry and all of that. But I do want to say right here in the beginning, this is the same company that we're partnered with, the code Growcast. A lot of people took advantage of the uh, Black Friday deals, et cetera, et cetera. But what a lot of people don't know is that Lumatech, a longstanding lighting company, is a sister company. Our team's going to get into that in a second. And this is actually the company that I started with back in Humboldt County, 2010, all those years ago, when I went out to uh, Wolfman's Hydro Shop and I picked up my first set of grow gear, built my first grow room, I grabbed those purple digital Lumatech 600 watt adjustable ballasts, Euro style, baby. And I'm so glad they hooked me up with those. Um, that worked so well for me. That 600 watt HID, when, when many people were growing a thousand at the time, uh, I did the digital 600s and I got like 16 of them and I filled out my space and it just did so well for me, man, for like five years. So I was like tickled to see that Photon Tech was basically Lumatech. And again, you'll clarify in a second, but that's what I started with, Martim. So it's a wild coincidence and, and it definitely had me, uh, had me laughing. Very cool. It's great to know that. It, it has been our image for ages. Uh, now it's changing a bit uh, as we, we move to LEDs also. But the digital ballast, especially the 600 watt or the 1000 purple ballast was always uh, our most famous image and for what we have been known on, especially on the, on the HID world. But it's important to clarify that Lumatech um, has grown in the early 20s, um, 2004 more, more, more exactly. And basically, we have split it between Lumatech Inc., which was the, with the, the company responsible to operate uh, in USA and Canada, and uh, Lumatech Limited, which is us uh, and w operating in Europe. So we started ah. with the exact same digital ballast. Okay, the ballast was the same. Of course, they could have some different in voltage and current, but the product was the same initially. But this was in the beginning. Eventually, each company, uh, of course, we kept the same. Um, the same shape, the same color, the same name, but we eventually moved to different factories, ensuring in the beginning that the product was operating the same, but eventually moved to different factories. And we moved to a whole different company from Lumatech Inc. So we separated ourselves a long time ago and each of us have, has, has, has created our own story. So I'm not here to talk about Lumatech Inc. because we are not related to Lumatech oh, Inc. at all. Okay. We are Lumatech Limited. But again, we were the first to introduce still the digital, the digital ballast. So it started with Lumatech Inc. In, in North America and we through Europe, uh, Australia, basically everywhere else uh, outside Americas. So this was, uh, as I said, around 2004. And so far we have been, until some years ago, we have been uh, uh, leaders on the hobby market and not only, on, especially on, on, on digital ballasts. And eventually around four years ago, five years ago, maybe more, we start considering LEDs. Because of course, we were not just doing uh, HID ballasts, we were doing all the range from 250 watts, 400 watts, 600 watts, 1000 watts, twin 600 um, ballasts. And then also, of course, metal halide lamps, uh, HPS lamps, uh, 400 volts and 240 right. volts. Reflectors, double-ended, single-ended, some controls, we start tuning, and this is, was also part of my job, to start tuning the product range while the LEDs were still not reliable enough and we were not comfortable enough to, to launch an LED. So we basically have tuned our HID range. And eventually, four years ago, after a long process of developing and testing and researching on LED and LED components, we have finally introduced um, our LED range, which has been uh, also part of what I've been done, this together uh, uh, with the full rebranding of the company. And it, it was a huge success, a huge success. Um, it made us being uh, uh, leaders in Europe uh, on the LED, on the LED uh, grow light. And the truth is that we were having huge and huge and constant and please, please, can we have a disease uh, in North America? <laughs> Uh, how can we access those lights? Right, right. For for the listeners, I'm sorry to interject, but the Zeus was your Lumatech series for Europe. And I got to admit, man, I mean, listen, I love my Photon Tech. I love the sexy red, but the purple, you guys have the Zeus model is in that purple. Really, really cool. So just for the listener, that's the exact same thing that, like you said, they were servicing overseas. 
And so that's how Photon Tech was born when we were demanding it. Yeah, it was uh, in, in terms of Lumatech, we were limited in the trademarks. We could not use the word Lumatech and we could not go there, go to the US and Canada with the Lumatech word. So we kept it away of North America for a long time. But knowing that North America, it's the pioneer market. It's like uh, you guys are a step ahead comparing to Europe in, in so many factors. So it was a market that we really wanted to be, but that we didn't have the opportunity to go before. But from the moment we launched the Zeus line in Europe, we start to have, uh, as again, big, big, big constant requests. <laughs> and then we had to consider doing something. And what we have done was to, to create a sister company under a different name, under a different branding, but with the exact same components, with the exact same diodes, with the exact same feature, manufacturing, everything was the same. Of course, that for, for North America, we would oh. we include a, a driver that could operate from 122 to 77 volts, which in Europe we do it from 220 to 240. Right. That was the only difference. But in terms of components, uh, warranty, manufacturing, everything was the same and is the same. Okay, okay. That that answers my first question. Um, I wanted to know if there were any differences in the build, but it sounds exactly the same. My understanding is the number of components providers, that list is very small. Can you tell us from a manufacturing standpoint, if that's the case, who the big players are and why you guys kind of landed where you did? I'll dig into that in a second, but just talk to me about the components options out there and who the big players are. Yeah, sure. So basically the LED lighting industry is, is as you know, is growing for, for many years. It's not recent, but the reliable and high quality features is more recent. And we can consider very well-known ones, uh, providers of, of, of LED chips in this case. And here I can say Osram, Lumilet, Samsung, but there are other uh, leading chip companies that aren't so well-known. And they also provide good reliable LED chips like Seoul, which is the, the, the LED chips that we use on our greenhouse features uh, for Lumatech, oh. Edison, LG, Everlight, uh, Toyota. But again, Osram and Lumilets are the ones we use on our Zeus Pro range. And again, and also on our um, X Pro range. I would just, just like to clarify one quick thing regarding the link between uh, and, the, and the products between Photontech and Lumatech. Please. We have a big line of LEDs on Lumatech, but some are standard, some are pro. For Photon Tech, we have selected only the Pro range. As you can see, we have a less, a lower number of LED models in Photon Tech than in Lumatech. So we have selected only the Pro range of the Zeus line. And um, sure. going back to the LED components, of course, that the LED chips are extremely important. And if we aim to be like quality products, uh, to do so, we need to keep our high quality build standards high, mainly by focusing on, on these quality LED chips. And how can we judge and how can we measure high quality chip, LED chips? Uh, most cases is the perfect combination of a number of factors, efficacy, durability and lifetime, cost, decay value, power per chip, temperature, and others. So uh, basically the required maintenance of this is, is greatly reduced. So this is then basically translated into energy and maintenance savings. Uh, and of course, something that we stand for is also environmental sustainability. And so to do that, we aren't pushing our LED features to the limit. Um, we basically, we want low current passing through those chips, mm -hmm. uh, maintaining the efficacy values high, then translating in, 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 in a viability to convert um, the electricity into usable photons. And then of course, a goal is to keep an excellent lifetime and to lower the decay value. So we also want to deliver the best possible ratio uh, low ratio of decay value by again maximizing th these energy losses and then uh, translating it into the heat produced by the diodes, which is then transferred to the aluminum bars, uh, which we have the passive cooling, for example, through the fins that we have on the back of the bars. Because uh, as you know, electronics love uh, low temperatures. <laughs> right. Sorry, I, I'm not sure if you're gonna say something. I'm, I was I was touching on the HPS. No, I was just I was just thinking about how nice that design is. The way you guys have the fins and then the removable drivers. There's a lot of specifics that I like. The magnetic bars. There's a lot of specifics that I like about that. But um, yeah, it just seems like there's so few main players in the components game that the light manufacturers just have to kind of decide: Am I gonna do? you know, folding or am I going to do magnetic? Am I going to do 
uh, on board dimmer, you know, 40 to 100, 0 to 100. Th- those are that's just kind of a cost benefit analysis. And uh, I think you guys have kind of landed on a really cool one. But I'm always interested to hear from your perspective, you know, how you settled on the components that you use, how you settled on the spectrum that you guys have dialed in, testing, and anything you want to discuss. I'm, I'm interested in going down. Yeah. Uh, about the components is exactly what I was, was I was telling you before is like the chips are ex- extremely crucial, but it's a factor within all the other factors that you also mentioned. The driver and the driver are our own drivers, Lumatech in this case, Photontech, but it's Lumatech because it's it's similar to the to the ballasts. And this has been our image for ages. So it's we use our own drivers and we have the option to have it remote. We have the removable bars because we were pioneers also on the modularity bar design. Sometimes, yeah, you will see folding frames, but if something happened to a single component, if the bars are not removable, you will have to replace, for example, the whole feature, sure. which is not very practical. Getting them up is way easier too. I'm telling you from my perspective, someone who just hurt their back, uh, the getting them up is so much easier with the magnetic bars, but, but sorry, continue. We, we tried, we tried to make a, a model that a single person could assemble it. And I think you got the, the thousand XT, which is the heavier we, what we had, and I hope you managed to to do it by yourself. I think you did. And it's so easy to install, so quick to install. And this practicality is extremely important. And it's it's not by accident that we have, for example, an external dimmer. If we have uh, incorporated dimmer on the frame, just by having it, this will decrease the IP level. Uh, That's why we have an external dimmer. I'm sorry, what's that? What will it decrease? The IP, IP, I mean the waterproof and dustproof uh, um, levels. Oh, I hadn't considered that. Yeah. This is extremely important because, as you know, grow space can get very humid and humidity together, uh, condensation or uh, moisty places can, can, of course, affect the lifetime and the performance of a feature. That's why we have IP65. This means that uh, this feature can handle low water pressure jets. And this, over time, it's extremely important um, to not have the diodes exposed, to not have the connections exposed. This will ensure the, the feature can operate correctly Jeez. without losing performance for the time we say. And the time we say, it's a minimum of five years. Otherwise, we would not be giving five years warranty because our warranty does cover everything. So sorry if it's just too much. I, I'm, too, I'm going too fast, but basically it's, it's besides the LED chips is also extremely important to have outstanding quality drivers, chassis, cabling, the waterproof IP, as I said, the PCB design, heat sink, and by this I mean the passive cooling, the modularity, the user-friendly assembling, and other key features. Jeez, man. And fortunately, today, today, and especially in North America, you have several third-party companies that they run tests of the features. Um, or for example, the, the DLC certification. Whoever is in DLC are companies that are comfortable with the specifications, you know? So we always suggest, look, Check uh, uh, impartial reviews like Dr. Coco does, like Migro does. Oh, nice. L- or go to uh, independent testing uh, uh, websites that you can see our features tested by independent companies and they will back up our, our specifications. So this is also important for us. Listen, and man. sorry, we, we, you touch on the spectrum. We're going to go on the spectrum for sure. <laughs> sorry that I, I just... No, no through. problem. We'll head on to the spectrum in a second here. Again, I, was, I just want to make really clear this is not... Uh, an advertisement episode. And this is actually a good time to to thank you, Martim, about this. You know, at Growcast, like, we do not take exclusive partnerships. We believe that there's a lot of good brands out there. We want to help growers save money. So we would never partner with a brand who says, hey, you can't advertise with any other light company or what have you. So for you to be cool with that in the first place and then come onto the show to talk about, you know, light science outside of the world of photon tech, it is really cool of you. And again, we don't want to be one of those shows where you get a lighting partner and it's like they're the only lights that exist, right? Because we do want to help growers save money regardless of how they're growing. So it's really cool that you vibe with that. I, I just wanted to say that. And before we move into you kind of non-photon tech related stuff like Spectrum and all of that, I appreciate you coming on and being a guest. And, and like I said, understanding our mission and that we represent many growers of many different walks of life, if that makes sense. It makes total sense. and and. Really, it's work like you are doing that that it's helping all of us 
the industry needs education. The industry needs reliable companies, not only us. Like we win with the success of other lighting companies, you know? It's the market is changing. We are moving to LED, for example. So it's part of all the brands coming together and working together. As you say, there is a market for everyone. We just need to ensure the grower, which is the most important person for us because we learn with, with the grower, what needs to be done and, and listen to the grower and then try to impact that on our products. Try to offer something at a great price because it's possible to have a good price and with a very high quality um, product because unfortunately, at least in Europe uh, until some years back, the LED um, credibility was highly affected because there were several brands putting products in the market, extremely expensive, and they were lacking spectrum, they were lacking light intensity, they sure. were lacking modularity, they were lacking a number of factors that in a way stopped LED to come a bit earlier. So now, as you say, I think there is a room for everyone and we just want to, to hear the grower and um, we have the, the slogan in, in, in Lumatech, helping growers grow or in Photon Tech, built by growers for growers, because I think we are well positioned between we, we can set, satisfy the beginner growing, mm -hmm. the starter, the middle, and the professional. And I think we are well positioned to, to satisfy the needs of, of, of the all involved ones. That, that's really cool, man. And, and we, we kind of vibe with that. You know, I, I would hate to, you know, bag on anyone for the light they used. So for you to be cool with us, come on the show. And, you know, it, it's just really cool. But um, I want to talk specifically about, like we said, we teased Spectrum. Why don't we move on to that? We'll be right back with Martim, but before that, the order of cultivation beckons you. That's right. Our membership, growcastpodcast.com forward slash membership. It's new. It's improved. It's shiny. It's incredible. Get your grow problem solved. That's the first thing. If you've got issues in your garden, if you're just getting started, you hit up the beginner channel. You get all of your questions answered by me, Wolfman, Mary Beth, team members, everybody in there. Or uh, like I said, if you've got a plant problem, you just need to diagnose a deficiency or get some help, hop in the plant problems channel. Now, that's just the beginning. There's contests. There's giveaways every single week. There's live streams. There's hundreds of hours of member content. Plus our whole Discord community where you can join a regional chapter, meet other Gromies in your area, join guilds. If you're in the uh, Nature's Guardian Guild, that shows that you are an earth responsible farmer. Uh, if you join the Cocoa Growers Guild or the Land Race Preservation Guild, we've got some really cool stuff going on in our community. It's all over at growcastpodcast.com forward slash membership. Come and join today. It is the greatest. I think you will absolutely love it. If you're a positive-minded grower looking to uplift others, then come and check it out. You are welcome in the order of cultivation. Growcastpodcast.com forward slash membership. Join today. We would love to have you over there. You can get in time for this week's giveaway. All right, everyone, let's get back to it with Martim. How did you guys research and develop your spectrum? And what does it mean to you as a manufacturer to dial that in for cannabis growers? Yeah, first of all, it's 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 important to mention uh, that spectrum is it's it's a dimension of light. It's absolutely crucial. We have three main dimensions of light: the light intensity or quantity, and here we're talking about, for example, the PPF uh, that we're going into more detail further away. We have light quality, which is the spectrum, and we have light duration, uh, photo period. So yeah, re regarding the spectrum, uh, uh, basically we present a combination of LED chips to produce all possible colors uh, from the spectrum. Just similar like to explain, like the sunlight. So the amount of each color present on our spectrum is tuned to the specific needs of cannabis growth on the various growth stage. The full spectrum coming from the mixture of our Osram and, and LumiLab diodes offers the, the best possible light for cannabis species in our opinion in an energy efficient way. So to promote cannabis photosynthesis, our spectra uh, will give information about their environment, allowing control their morphology and physiological attributes. So to go into a bit more detail of our spectrum, and in, in this, I mean the spectrum of the pro features and not the, the SQ range for smaller spaces, I mean, I mean the X range. At a technical characteristic point of view, it has 60% of blue photons, 37% of green, 46% of red photons and 1% of far red photons. So basically 99% of the total amount of photons 
uh, is falling into the the PAR region. So the blue the blue promote uh, photosynthesis, strong root growth, and control the plant shape, which is uh, called photomorphogenesis. Um, this blue amount is more than enough to ensure an optimal uh, plant shape. Bigger proportions can stretch your plant. This is reality. Green color is also needed because it passes through thick canopies or to under leaves be helping the plant promote photosynthesis more efficiently. Red photons are essential for flowering. Photosynthesis, again, germination, and of course will have a greater impact uh, on, on, on the quality and volume of the yield, or the yield in this case. And the combination of all these photons with this different wavelength energy uh, has helped us uh, build uh, um, an excellent quality grow light with a, with a good spectrum. So another why uh, we are not supporters of offering spectrum customization. And here I, I bring this because you will still see around, uh, and in the past it happened a lot, you will see LED fixtures that offer uh, an option to customize the spectrum on the fixture. Sure. This for a professional grower, it's perfect as long as he knows how to play it. But in our opinion, is is risky to do it if you want to reach all targets. Um, sometimes inexperienced growers may damage uh, a full crop by play with this parameter, and it's easy to 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 make a mess up. The features with this feature also can cost more and be less reliable due to having more electronics than needed. So we decide to keep it as simple as possible. Um, the end user just needs to hang the light at a defined distance from the canopy. It may vary if CO2 is used or not. So for example, the standard distance that we give uh, in Lumatec, it's 40 centimeters from the canopy, 50% intensity in veg, 75% in the first weeks uh, of flowering, and then you move to 100% uh, for the remaining or for, for most of the period of flowering. Uh, and then you just alight, ah. you just adjust the intensity with the dimmer or the controller. The advantage of using the controller besides all the other features is that you can adjust the PPFD um, more accurately because you have 1% increments. And just a quick side note uh, regarding the diodes. Um, we and, and, and most uh, leaders on, on the horticulture grow light manufacturers we use a small share of deep red um, 660 nm diodes. Uh, I bring this because there is still a misconception that the red diodes are there just for flowering, which is not the real case. Mostly these are used to bring the feature overall PPF output and efficacy up. Uh, these are very uh, high efficacy diodes. Oh. So these help a lot to bring the efficacy of the feature higher. Of course, that also has an impact in flowering. But basically, these diodes, um, they can deliver the higher number of photons with the less energy consumption. So ideal for higher production and yield, of course. So to make the perfect balance between these uh, and the bigger proportion of white diodes, which in reality, they are uh, blue diodes with a yellow phosphorus. We get portions of blue, green, and red photons. And the combination of all these colors will result in the 3,800 Kelvin for our X Pro range and 4,000 Kelvin for our uh, SQ Pro range. Sorry that I bring this, but I, I just thought it was also important no, because no, there's still many, many yeah. people th still think the red eyes are just for flowering, which is not. No, that makes perfect sense. Specifically the case. That makes perfect sense because we've spoken to previous guests who talk about, you know, the different colors having different efficacy with, with how much light they can put down is what you're saying. So the red spectrums are not just there for you know, the, the red effects, the, the spectrum effects itself, but because they're good at delivering light, that's an important distinction. And, and it makes sense to what we've heard in the past. You know, we see these, uh, quantum board styles, these printed circuit board styles. That's the same technology, just, just split into bars. I know you guys went with the bars. seems like a lot of people are now going with those better dispersal of heat. Of course, let me ask you this though. Have you toyed around with UVB? Doing any research on that over at Photon Tech and Lumitech or no? No, it, it's it's good you bring this topic. Actually, I had it uh, kept for further discussion, if but it's it's basically um, it's good at touch on it. UV UV light. Um, I think there is still a, a lot of studies and a lot of scientific evidence behind it uh, that needs to be properly taken care, of, especially because UV light, if not used correctly, can be dangerous. We do, and we will link, we introduce um, UVA and UVB supplement LED bars. I give you the reason why we do supplement LED bars and we do not incorporate it in our features 
one of the limitations of UV light is the lifetime. Uh, usually a UV diode, of course it did vary with, with, with the range, but can, it can vary on a lifetime of 8,000 hours, while our features, normal features will, will hold 60,000 hours. So by adding a UV diode on the feature, once the UV lifetime is, is over, then we have a problem because then you have to replace the whole fixture. So it's easier and it's more practical, it's more efficient and optimized to use it as a supplemental LED light, or in this case, uh, as a supplemental LED bar. For example, this year and next year, um, Lumatech and Photontech, we're gonna launch uh, this UV supplemental light bar to be applied either directly on the frame or can be used also as a separate Sweet. Uh, as a separate feature. Nice. I knew. I just sniffed that. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> this feature of adding a, a UV bar to other feature, as I explained, it's due to the difference of lifetime. So basically, the, the, the effects of young cannabis plants mostly will be to activate uh, the second metabolite activity of the plant, such as THC and CBD. And of course, one of the main focus as well is to increase terpene levels, uh, the oils in the plant, which then gives cannabis its distinctive aroma and flavor. And this, there is evidence behind this. There is papers published, for example, by in 2018 by Magnini. Also, um, another paper that, uh, and several other papers that, that say that short wavelength uh, irradiation will trigger the cannabis stress response uh, and the plant starts to protect itself from the abiotic stress. So increased stress level results also in increased metabolite activity and therefore not just higher THC accumulation in flowers when compared to light sources that lacking UVA or blue light. Wow. And so these secondary uh, metabolites also protect the plant not only from the light uh, irradiation, but also from pathogens and pests. Um, and the result is, is, is a compact plant with increased THC concentration and it's furthermore stronger against uh, um, fungal pathogens uh, like botrytis and common pests right. that we are that we are used to. So specifically on the UVs. Yeah, you're on the UVB train. I that wasn't even on the list. I just sniffed that one out myself. Glad I asked that question. <laughs> you're kind of echoing some of the things that we've heard on this show. You know, ancillary cannabinoids like THCV being increased with with UVB light. So it's crazy that you're so on board with it. Yeah, again, as I said, it's uh, because it's it's a topic that there is still a lot of evidence being worked on. We need to ensure that we are totally comfortable with that. We do enough testing, we do proper testing. And of course, we help also educate uh, our growers if they want to use these features. Because first of all, it's crucial to, to ensure that the normal grower will, will not require this. We don't want to launch a, a, a feature, or, or in this case, a supplemental um, bar, that people think hey, I need that. A full spectrum, our full spectrum um, features are made to operate perfectly during full cycle. Of course, that you want, if you want to even increase further the quality of the crop, which is the, the biggest impact on the UV, is on the quality, uh, not on the yield you may add UVB and UVA. In this case, we, we are working on a percentage. Usually the UVA percentage needs to be higher. So we are working on a 75% uh, UVA and 25% of UVB, while the UVC is usually uh, the most dangerous one and is using for, pest, for pesting, for example, but we don't have a mm. UVC. So adding a UVB and UVA to your grow is potentially dangerous, as I explained. Uh, UV light is, is, is strong and can damage the plants, the growers, uh, even the plastic benches, you can notice uh, the impact on the plastic. So imagine the impact on human skin or human high. Um, so a small excess in UV can and also inhibit plant development and eventually destroy it. It's so easy to have. Wow. So we are preparing a, a, a new multi-zone also um, to ensure that we can deliver a proper UV supplement. And by this, I mean using from one to two LED bars per 600 watt feature, for example if you want to use it with, with that 6 sign on feature. Mm -hmm. So it's something, again, that we are working on uh, and we will delivering it uh, during next year. And we are very excited with it. Sweet. We pulled that one out of the bag. Have you guys um, thought about, this is another thing I've, I've talked with Dr. Coco about, which is supplemental lighting, either side lighting or under lighting. And he's kind of, you know, poo-pooed uh, side lighting in the past, but then he was kind of changing his tune a little bit, I feel like. 
Have you looked at any sort of alternative or supplemental lighting options to increase cannabis growers' yields? Yeah, look, 100%. That was also um, a while ago when, when I led the development of, of, of Lumatec LED fixtures. And eventually, we start noticing, not, not notice, but of course, that not all grow spaces are equal. And maybe you are using an X-Pro, an X600 Pro, and you may be lacking intensity on the edges. But you cannot fit there another 600 watt, and you cannot fit there a 465. So what is ideal? Okay, why don't we create an individual 100 watt bar supplied by a 100 watt driver that you can place wherever you want. You can place it just near the, the X per range, or you can put it as side lighting, or you can place it wherever you want. Basically, it's, a, it's the same bar present on the 1000 XT. <laughs> so it's a, a 100 watt 2.9 Pro bar that is run individually. It's pretty cool. You put it wherever you want, and you can even use it for propagation, any, anything, because it's full spectrum. It is a very flexible and dynamic bar. We are actually about to, to launch it to, uh, in Lumatech, and we plan to launch it next year no in Photon Tech. <laughs> it's definitely it it it's so it was a must and here I mean it's more like a a supplement for for the intensity. If we are talking about supplement on the quality, then we are talking about the UV, for example, sure. that we spoke before. But we have that one for the intensity for the sides, and then we can also consider supplemental light light for greenhouse. I know that is not most of our uh, listeners are running greenhouse, but also for greenhouse we do supplemental lighting, which usually is a very different feature. This is just a curiosity, but a greenhouse LED feature, it's a very different feature from a LED for indoor. Because oh, really? in a greenhouse, we want a compact feature that creates the less shadow possible as possible. And that doesn't create obstacles on the sand penetration. It needs to be uh, very highly efficient uh, with the notorious uh, PPF output in, if we're growing cannabis. And just with specific spectrum additions, it doesn't need to be full spectrum again. So, for example, if we are talking about a, um, a feature for cannabis flowering, we would include our uh, red plus blue option uh, with red and blue diodes, which will help the feature to be highly efficient. But again, I know that um, greenhouse applications are not so uh, common on our listeners, but it's just a curiosity. Oh, no, no. We have greenhouse growers for sure. Now, that's fascinating. I kind of want to dig into that. Last part, you're saying because we have the saturation from the sun, the spectrum requirements are different. I understand about the shadow. You're not wanting a shadow from the fixture, but you're saying even the spectrum requirements are different because of the sun, right? Yeah, and, and especially uh, here, because the, the fixtures are also placed uh, uh, high, here we want to deliver the highest number of photons, and we can achieve that through highly efficient dials, oh, as we saw okay. before. That's I why see. we include the red plus blue ones. But Again, before going into too much detail, again, in supplemental light, it's also good to remind those terms. I know that Dr. Coco, it, you mentioned a couple of times that Dr. Coco, this is P uh, PPF, PAR, PPFD, uh, and this is actually, uh, it's, it, they look techy, but they are also uh, important and, and, and uh, easier, more or less, to, to understand once we are in, on it. And I'm sure our listeners, as I said, step ahead than what we doing in Europe. So PAR, PPF, PPFD, I'm sure it's it's already a, a common uh, uh, topic, but <laughs> it's, again, if, if we want to go into a small detail of that, I can just uh, say it really quickly. Otherwise, no, uh, please. You, you tell me. Yeah. yeah okay. So PAR, or in this case, PAR light, we're talking about the photosynthetic active radiation. PPF, uh, we are talking about photosynthetic photon flux. And PPFD, we are talking about photosynthetic photon flux density. Okay, this seems complex, but what is this? Par light is the wavelength from 400 to 700 nanometers of light that plants will use to drive uh, photosynthesis. So, for example, two light sources can have the same par output, but depending on the, on the produced wavelength, the plant can have different performance. So, PPF, in this case, provides the total number of photons in the par region of the wavelength that is then transmitted um, from any light source. So, however, um, PPF does not consider the direction in which the light is emitted. So this is just a, a total output of light intensity of the fixture. Right, this is just what's coming out of the fixture. Exactly, right. and PPFD, it's basically the number of photons in the PAR region and tell us how many photons 
which dry photosynthesis are reaching that specific area per second, which is something what we are measuring on the canopy or on the leaf. So PAR, PPF and PPFD are limited, of course, to the 400 to 700 nanometers wavelength of light, particularly with cannabis. And however, um, the UV and far red is not considered here. So I bring the attention, for example, for the last uh, review of, of uh, uh, Dr. Coco on the SQ300 Pro, that he has also considered the far red, which is outside, supposedly outside of the PAR region. That's why I call it, uh, that's why he amazingly stated it, the EPAR. It's far. <laughs> and here we can also consider uh, other small different off terms. If we include the, the UV, for example, and the far red, we can consider the P-bar, the photobiologically active radiation, and the PBF, or photobiological photon flux, which corresponds uh, to a slightly longer, uh, uh, wider uh, range, oh, which is from 280 wow. to 800. So some people still use the 300 to 800. But I believe that in the we believe that in the future it will be common uh, to use the 280 to 800 nanometers. Since again, the, the UVB radiation starts at 280. Get out of here! This is a prediction that I want to put on this show right now because it just sounds right to me. You're telling me that that we're all talking about PPF and PPFD and everybody spazzes out about U moles per joule and all that. You're saying the next big metric is going to be P bar? Is that what it's called? P bar? Possibly, uh, possibly yes. Uh, it's still hard to to predict because it will also depend on on how long it will take to have proper evidence of the impact of the, the UV and far red. Sure. Of course, there is already a lot of evidence, but again, is is what I, I've I've touched before. If it's not used properly, it's also risky to use UV light. Sure. Uh, of course, that it has an impact if used properly, but it's also easy to not use it properly. So I think that possibly in the future, near future, yes. <laughs> and it's amazingly uh, how, how Dr. Coco have covered it in, in his last uh, product review. It's just, it's just excellent, you know. Nice. So, Love it. Shout yeah. out to Coco for cannabis, of course. Well, I mean, I guess that kind of leads nicely into the next question here. We've seen several leaps in the LED market. You talked about those old style LEDs. I assume you were talking about the big bulky blurple ones, you know, and then it kind of leapt to this more full spectrum thing. And then bar style was a huge leap from quantum bar to bar style. Now it seems like everything is bar style that's, that's new and coming out. Do you foresee any other big advancements like that in the near future? Or have we kind of bottlenecked the evolution of these devices or no? Look, um, ourselves, like Photon Tech, we develop uh, the feature, uh, the shape of our feature to be simple to be simpler, uh, effective as possible in terms of what's really important. Costs, a cost like dollar per micromole, which is a unit of measure that uh, is and should be used by growers when comparing LED grow lights. It doesn't make sense anymore to make the ratio uh, dollar per wattage, and especially make the, the ratio, how much are you going to pay for this feature, divided by the total output, in this case, the PPF, and you might use this ratio to compare grow lights. Light spread, uniformity, spectrum, heat dissipation, uh, durability, reliability, uh, energy consumption, all these factors are still drivers for the bar style. And again, as I said, it's, these are, are targeted and perfect for starters, professional research growers that could perform their assembly and easily take all the advantage of the light intensity, quantity, quality. And of course, besides the notorious light spread on uniformity, which is a huge factor of the, the bar style, features, the bar style feature also allow for a much better air circulation between bars. While other style LED features may retain the air flux, the space between bars will offer uh, efficient heat sink and higher levels of uniformity that in the end will help uh, avoid uneven canopies. So to, to summarize regarding the, the feature frame, uh, I do think that we will still keep using similar style features for, for, for indoor vertical farming, for example for again for optimal uh, uniformity light spread and heat dissipation um in which that again we can what we can expect is a constant development on the led chips and frame optimization like the led chips is what we covered before those efficiency lifetime decay values everything all of these factors to improve and then regarding the frame we can add for example an extra space in the in the middle bars that we start to seeing uh, to improve the uniformity on the edges 
you can possibly add uh, extra chips on strategic points of the feature and other similar feature uh, uh, improvements. Because um, the LED market, it's been um, in the last in the last ten years, has been developing constantly and is being developing according to growers' needs. This is totally crucial. So even so, there is still a lot to do on this field uh, because uh, there are applications where LEDs don't make economic sense for some of the growers. And and here I, I mean, for example, if you have a really limited budget and in, in you want to start, or if you have a greenhouse and again a limited budget. But in terms of, I have no doubt, and we have no doubt that LED is here to stay forever. Right. Um, no, I'm not going to say forever because I don't know. But what <laughs> will really happen and what we'll believe will happen is then the link between LED and machine learning and artificial intelligence. This is part of the future for Jeez, sure. Jeez, wow. Um, That's wild stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it will happen. It will happen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, uh, because, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and for now, what will happen is the improvement in efficiency. Optical power, lifespan. Can, like can, we, can we talk about that? Of, of, so you talk you talk about the increase of, inf- of of efficiency and and output of these chips, for instance. What is the process that allows us to continue to optimize that? I, I know that we've talked to previous manufacturers about using different elements to dope these uh, diodes to tint them different colors. That's what you called it, doping. Um, but but I, I don't know if you want to. If you have any insight into that, like how is it possible and what technologies are we specifically applying to allow us to advance the quality of these components? You mean the, the LED chips, right? Anything, Between sure, yeah, life yes, time. yeah, exactly. The chips, li- yeah, lifespan, all of that. It's what has been happening in the last uh, few years or more. Like you see every year a chip. That's, this is also how, the, the, also how the, the features are getting more efficient. It's like in the beginning, People were just putting more chips on the feature, while you should maybe put maybe a slightly lower l- number of chips, but ensuring that these chips are more efficient, they can last longer. And this is done by by the the greatly uh, manufacturers of, of 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 chips, and they keep running running constant constant testings and performance tests to make sure that not only the efficiency is is, is increased because. It's easy to increase the efficiency of the diet, but you are also increasing the temperature, and this can have an opposite effect on the decay or on the lifetime. So it's the combination of all these uh, these factors that will make sure that any new diet and any new chips that we are seeing in and seeing coming into the market are properly taken care of and are properly tested to operate at these uh, high intensities and to operate at these big life long lifetime as we as we as we right. spoke but uh, basically the improvement in efficiency the optical power uh, lifespan price have moved leds lights from from the research stage of development and to an innovative uh, viable alternative to to conventional light sources in, in in the articultural field so the ratios of the wavelength spectrums and the role of wavelengths outside of side of the red and blue this still needs to be investigated and understood, especially UV and far red, as we spoke before. Um, so horticultural LED companies, we continue to study the effect of growing cannabis crops in control environments under different spectra of LED. And these experiments will eventually lead to a greater understanding of the effect of different spectra quality of light on plant growth and, and, and morphology. Um, vertical farming and indoor, and, and indoor farming continues to increase popularity since we, we can have high density production in multiple layers. And the proper lights for these environments are LEDs without any doubt. Uh, mm-hmm. This growth technique continues to evolve in smart technology, sensors, cloud-based operations. So uh, we believe that, again, LED horticultural lights technology will eventually be integrated with machine learning and artificial intelligence, AI, um, where it can, for example, alert the, the grower for diseases before happening, precisely reg- regulate the light quantity and quality output at the best cost-effective way. And um, yeah, LEDs, I think it, it wow. will continue to take part of the market share uh, from other type of light source Jeez. and will become dominant in the coming years. Uh, so, no, and I don't mean just in, in cannabis growing. We start to seeing like the regular uh, food production supply and LEDs are taking a huge role here that we have even no idea in the future 
we are just an overpopulated world that need to consider alternative ways to, to produce food. And for now, it's just, we still don't believe it will happen heavily. But yeah, in the future, it will be pretty common for a, a city to be almost auto-sustainable and produce a big share of their crops. And by these, I mean fruits and vegetables. Oh, man, uh, indoors. I love that. Uh, there's so many advantages uh, so advantage on that. Uh, there are really good documentaries illustrating that. Even David Etterborough talks about it uh, in his last documentary. It was also covered on, on the last uh, uh, COP26 um, convention. So, yeah, it's, it, it's really exciting because it's, uh, it can change so many, so, so many things in our daily life and in our world that we know today that it's not going on a most sustainable way. And sustainability is it's so important. I love that message, man. That's that's a great spot to end it here. Martim, I know we have a hard out here in just a couple of minutes. Photontech-lighting.com, of course, code GROWCAST, saving 10%. Uh, we appreciate you, Martim, as a partner and as a guest coming on and talking. Like I said, you know, many members are enjoying your lights very much, Martim. So I thank you, my friend. No, I, I thank you, Jordan. Uh, I'm sorry if I was uh, going too fast or maybe no, not at all, man. too many topics, but uh, it was perfect. It's um, yeah, it, it was a pleasure to be here and I hope it's, it was um, it's interesting for our listeners and I'm sure I will happy to be back here. And uh, yeah, you, you can, you can Absolutely. visit, um, you guys can visit our website if you want to know about our products, uh, if you want to find out where to buy our products. Anything, just hit us up with a message and uh, we'll happily to, to, to be with you shortly. And for the overseas listeners, of course, Lumatech Lighting. And at Growcast on Instagram is the other thing you need to follow. Follow Photon Tech as well on Instagram. Great page to follow. Get the you know deals and all that stuff. Stacks with the code, which is pretty cool. Thank you so much for tuning in, listeners. I appreciate you so much. We got a wrap here. This is Martim from Photon Tech and Lumatech. And Jordan River signing off. Wishing you an extraordinary day. We'll see you next time on Growcast. Be safe, everybody, and grow smarter. That's our show for today, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Before we wrap it up, Aquaponic Cannabis Masterclass. That's right. Steve Raisner's course at apmjclass.com. You can save with code GROWCAST. Save, I think it's like 60 bucks on the entire course. It's everything you need to know. Uh, Steve Raisner has put together this incredible front-to-back aquaponics course. People have been asking about this. Everything Aquachronic, find it at apmjclass.com. Use code GROWCAST. Teaches you everything you need to know, front-to-back, growing cannabis and aquaponics. I believe they've got vegetable content too. Fish content, obviously. Everything you need to have an aquaponic garden. It is absolutely beautiful over at apmjclass.com. Use code GROWCAST to save some bucks. Uh, Again, I've been getting a lot of inquiries about this. If you're thinking about going big in Oklahoma, for instance, where I'll be visiting, maybe you want to do aquaponics. Maybe you want an entire master course to teach you everything you need to know from the best in the game. apmjclass.com. Code GROWCAST. Oh, that's all for now, everyone. Like I said, I'm all over the place. We've got Oklahoma. The meetup is on January 21st. That's a Friday. Then uh, in February, the next month, we've got Southern California. Friday, the 18th of February. Come and see us in Southern California. We've got the Growcast Cultivators Cup in April. That's 4-23. Saturday there, 4-23. Uh, that is the submission date down in Southern Illinois, the hideaway. Legal indoor consumption at the hideaway. Come and drop off a sample or don't. Just come and smoke and hang out, honestly. I mean, I would love for you to enter the the Cultivator's Cup. But even if your harvest isn't ready in time, come and hang out. It's going to be a party. It's going to be so much fun. And then we're going to be printing up trophies with people's name on it and shipping them out. Multiple judges. We're doing it right. Very comprehensive judging program. Edibles, concentrates, flowers. It's all going down. The Cultivator's Cup, 423. So much going on. Check out everything we do at growcastpodcast.com slash action. Stay up to date on everything that we do with growcastpodcast.com slash list. Get on the green list. That's free. It's our mailing list. And of course, join our membership to go even deeper in the incredible Growcast community and the order of cultivation. All right, everyone. Take care out there. Love you all. Hope you had a wonderful holiday season. We're in 2022 now. Let's rock and roll. You can look forward to more Growcast. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.